In this video, we shall be looking at Nexus 5's camera changes made in Android version 4.4.2 and we'll be talking about some other stuff as well. This is a follow-up video of the full review that we did of the Nexus 5's camera previously. In this video, we shall be discussing the changes and how it affects the camera. So let's start with the interface. There isn't many things different except when a picture is taken in HDR, there is a little circular status indicator that shows it's processing something. Time taken between one shot to another is not much improved though the camera gets ready sooner. Still not fast enough for burst though if we are considering that. Another thing I noticed was that as soon as a picture is taken, it continues to do some post-processing. With relation to digital zoom, in HDR mode we could not zoom in and in video mode we could zoom in and then start videoing but now we are allowed to zoom in and out while in HDR mode or while doing video and that is a welcome feature let's see why in real life this can be very handy now it is a digital zoom let's not forget so if we go 4x uh, the quality does deteriorate quite a lot but in more like 2x it is still very much reasonable there's still some room for quality the optical stabilization really shows its benefit when videoing in 4x zoom. I mean, if we have an APS-C size sensor DSLR and we zoom all the way to 96mm, without a tripod it's hard to keep, keep the video stable. This here is a thumbs up. In HDR mode, the still pictures appears to be reasonably decent. However, I'd like to compare from previous to the new. With general daylight photography near ISO 100 everything seems okay however there are a few changes that I see with the HDR. To illustrate the difference let's look at the harbor bridge again. This is the picture taken with the updated 4.4.2 and this one with the previous 4.4. Granted the two pictures were taken in two different days the difference in the amount of details present in the either is so great that we cannot just pin it on lighting conditions alone there's a lot of things missing or present. Upon closer inspection we can see that the underside of the bridge is missing the obvious details which was present in the older version. Uh, also the issue of contrast. Some people did complain that previously the contrast was a little bit weak. Now they've gone overboard with it. It's so much turned up that it is sort of ruining the shots. But my biggest gripe is with the amount of noise now that is present. Before, there were noise but the software did a good job, a good attempt to smudge out the noise grains. Now it's fair to say that this picture has a fairly high ISO. So let's consider this picture. The billboard and the neon signs together created a lot of lights. Therefore, the ISO is relatively low at just 161. However, in the same picture, where there is a slightly less amount of light, there is a lot of visible grains present. Okay, I'll admit that I'm being a bit too critical with this grain issue, but the thing is that they had it right before. Now, to save what, 0.2 of a second for processing time, this is the trade-off? What a price to pay! Some of the other stuff that I needed to mention was with regards to the temperature. Yes, it does get warm expectedly as it is a smartphone. However, I've recorded it all the way up to 40 degrees and that's quite near the earpiece. As we go lower down the phone, the temperature drops all the way down to 29 degrees and the room temperature was 25 degrees at the, make at the time of making the video. So a rise of about 15 degrees or more and 42 degrees um, is relatively uncomfortable on the ear. I'm sure you'd agree. Now this is not an issue isolated to the Nexus 5 alone. In general, why not the phone manufacturers put the heat generating components at the lower end of the phone where we are lesser expected to touch it. Another thing to mention is that the Nexus 5 definitely has better sound processor than the Nexus 4. Next topic. In Sydney at least, we are receiving over 65 Mbps in 4G. But on a side note, on ADSL 2 Plus we receive less than 10 Mbps, which is a political problem really, not technical. Now the next thing everyone has different opinion about is how the phone feels. I think it's a bit too light and a bit too slippery, the white one at least. It could have used a little bit more weight. The Nexus 4 in this regards was a little bit better and if the Nexus 5 was a little bit thicker in order to place a bigger battery that would have been great because the battery life really is all over the place. 
Thank you for watching this update. If you have any questions or queries, please do leave a comment below. And please do also subscribe in order to stay updated with our latest upcoming videos, reviews and tutorials and so forth. Hope to see you next time. Bye for now.